Welcome to the Apostolic Encounter with the General Overseer of Top Ministries International, Rev. Ose Wusukovna. Sit back to enjoy the message. Kindly share this message to bless others. We give God all the praise and all the glory for another opportunity to be at his feet. Remember the virus is still around, so take good care of yourself. And may God richly bless you. Amen. Let's get into the scriptures and let's take Second Corinthians chapter number 9 and then verse 8. 2 Corinthians 9 verse 8. And God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that ye always, having all sufficiency in all things, may abound unto every good work. The scripture is telling that God is able to make all grace abound toward us. Our subject for today is grace for your assignment. Grace for your assignment. God is able to make all grace abound toward you. John 1 and then verse number 6, 16. John 1, 16. Very interesting. It said, And of his fullness have we all received, and grace for grace. 17. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus is full of grace and truth. Amen. Hallelujah. So he's able to give us grace. And he's able to make all grace abound toward us. Now let's get to Ephesians chapter number 4. Ephesians 4 and verse 4. There is one body and one spirit, even as ye are called, in one hope of your calling. You have one hope of your calling. Uh -huh. The verse 7. And but unto every one of us is giving grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. He had called us into the ministry and given a ministry gifts and then giving a grace to function. Hallelujah. And he's able to make all grace abound toward us that we may be able to fulfill our assignment. Amen. So today our subject is Grace for your assignment. Now, the point is, you need to position yourself for this grace. Because it is by his grace you'll be able to do it, what you have been called to do. But you need to position yourself for such a grace. Mm. When we say position yourself, what do we mean? We say separate yourself unto God. Separate yourself. Paul said he had been separated unto the gospel. Romans 1.1. 1, 1. Romans 1.1. 1, 1. This is what Paul is saying. Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated unto the gospel of God. Listen. He has been called. As a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated unto the gospel of Christ. What does that mean? It means God have caught him and set him apart. He is separated and consecrated himself for this cause. So that he will be able to do what God have called him to do. Amen. Without that separation and consecration, there will not be grace upon his life. Amen. Okay. But I don't mean that you can work your way for the grace. No. Then it even... It, it even defeats the meaning of grace. Grace is unmerited favor. You have not done anything, but God by his grace or mercy dispense of favor on, upon you. And you obtain this grace not by the works of righteousness that you have done. No man can obtain the grace of God. It is given on God's own merit. And he wants to give it out so that we can be able to accomplish his assignment. But we also know we need to position ourselves to be able to become recipient of this grace. So he was called and separated unto the gospel of Christ. 
And in his separation, that was, he did a whole lot of things. When you talk about Paul separating, <laughs> there were things he forsook and things he gave himself to. Now, let's look at Philippians. Philippians chapter number 3. Philippians chapter 3. Let's take Paul talking about his separation. Philippians chapter 3. And let's start from the verse number 12. Philippians chapter 3 and verse number 12. Not as though I have already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after, if that I may apprehend for that which I am also apprehended of Christ Jesus. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind, and reaching forth unto those things which are before. Mm -hmm. I press toward the mark of the price of the high calling of, of God in Christ Jesus. He said, I press toward the mark of the price of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Now listen. It's interesting. Paul is saying he had forsaken many things. He is a Jew. In fact. One of a Jewish elite, well-learned, educated Hebrew of Hebrews. A son who can, someone who can quote the Torah. Listen, well-educated in his days and well-respected. He sat under the feet of Gamaliel, one of a learned instructors in the scripture. And everybody respected him. This was Paul's background. But said, all these things he forsook, he forsook them for the knowledge and excellency in Christ. And he is pressing toward the mark of the price of the high calling. He wanted to fulfill God's assignment for his life. So all that who he is and all those things were not necessary. He looked ahead and he saw that he made, he made all the sacrifices. And prepared himself that God can use him. And he said he wanted, he was desiring that he may attain the power of the resurrection. And all those things are coming from this man called Saul. All that he had attained in life. When you talk about the flesh, he says, I'm a Hebrew of Hebrews. I'm a Jew. He's a layman, educated. Concerning the law, blameless. He hold, said, when you talk about the law, he's a Pharisee. These are his credentials in his past. But these are the things he was willing to lay aside. To pursue Jesus. To pursue the excellency of his power and presence. He, want to, he just let the, go those things. They were no more necessary to him. Why? Because God has separated him for the gospel of Christ. And his dream that he may know him. And the power of his resurrection. So he had separated himself from. The, and he had given himself wholly. To the cause of Christ. And he was pressing on. That he may come to a state. That he will be able to accomplish. All that I have called him for. Now listen. When we say separating yourself unto God. What do we mean? We mean. You want to require some devotions, some prayers, and some fasting. And then you set yourself for your assignment prepared for you. <laughs> what, what are you doing this for? It's at least, if nothing at all, your devotion and consecration for God will make you prepared to be sensitive to his spirit. Because hear me. Pursuing God and fulfilling his purpose will call for something very higher. The price for the high calling. It will take the Holy Spirit to usher you into the thing God has prepared. But you need to understand that when you consecrate yourself and separate yourself, you become sensitive to the Spirit. And he will lead and guide and bring you into the thing God has prepared. 
so that you can do that effective work. Hallelujah. So Paul said, he been called in the center past consecrated for the gospel of Christ. Why? He is preparing himself, positioning himself to that place where he will be sensitive to the Holy Spirit leading and guiding him into the grace of God. He said, Pastor, but all these things you are enumerating means it is the work he will do. No. No one can, listen, you can't do anything to attain it. The grace and the message of God, you can't work it out. But the point is, you cooperate with God's spirit. You cooperate with his spirit, leading you into it. Hallelujah. When you understand these things, blessed are ye. Blessed are ye. Because, listen, you may be wishing, you may be pressing, but what do I do? You get frustrated. Some will tell you, you meet a Christian and some of them think like, we have not prayed enough, we have not done anything. No, 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 no. The question is, what have been your calling? Because he'll be given grace according to the calling. Though the scriptures who read say, those he are called, he gave them more grace. So God has called you and he has given you grace. And because he has given you grace, according to the calling and the things he wants you to do. Now let's get to uh, Exodus chapter number 31. Let's take the verse 2 and 3. Exodus 31, 2 and 3. Aha. Uh -huh. See, I have called by name Bezali, the son of Uri, the son of Her, of the tribe of Judah. Mm -hmm. And I have filled him with war, the spirit of God in wisdom and in understanding and in knowledge and in all manner of workmanship. Here was a guy, Bezali, and a holy up. God have found them, selected them, not that he have done anything. He just chose them. And he have chosen that he will give his spirit unto them. That they will be filled with wisdom and understanding and in knowledge. So they will be the craftsmen who will do all the work and lead the team in building the tabernacle of God. You see? So they were given grace and assignment not to be preachers, but to be what? The craftsmen in wisdom and understanding and in knowledge so that they will be able to do all. Build the tabernacle of God. Hallelujah. So, but uh, what do you think about it? So, going to build the tabernacle need, need to be filled with the spirit? Yes. Hallelujah. They were filled with the spirit in wisdom. That's why we are reading from Exodus chapter number 31. Hallelujah. Now, when you read the account of Saul, he was chosen to be a war, a king. And God, by divine order, found Saul to be the first king in Israel. But he was a, a son of Kis. Nobody knows what kingship is. Nobody has thought about it. But God found this young man. And he came to the prophet Samuel, and Samuel declared to him, the spirit of the Lord shall come upon thee. You find some people and you join them, you prophesy with them, and thou shalt be turned into another man. Wow. So, when the spirit of the Lord came upon who? Saw, he was changed. How? Go and ask God. You see, but all these things, they did not select themselves. In fact, how did God elect them? It was by divine and by the sovereign right and work of God. God himself chose them. That's it. It was not, he chose Bezali to build and gave him spirit. He chose Saul to be king. He gave his spirit and that brought the changes in his life. Now, we are talking about God's grace that oh, for our assignment. It's God who calls. And when he calls, he equips. And he will give you grace and mercy. But we need to position ourselves. That is our duty. Praise the Lord. You see, so when you look to the apostles, they were called, yes. They were prepared, yes. But it came to a time the Lord told them, look. They were ready. He gave them their commission, told them what to do. 
But finally he said, don't go anywhere until the Holy Spirit come upon you. So what? Yes! It's the Holy Spirit who is always leading the work of God on the earth. The Holy Spirit. Listen, if he is not there, it is man's business. But when the Holy Spirit takes over, it's another thing. It's God in charge. Praise the Lord. And so when you read the whole scripture, you begin to find out. So God changed, transformed by the Spirit. The apostles, when you read Acts chapter number 6, and then let's take the verse number 4. It says something. But we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. Why were they going to take time in prayer and ministry of the world? They were called and separated for the gospel. But they needed to position themselves so that the Holy Spirit can flow through their life to be a blessing to others. So they chose to give themselves continually to prayer and to the ministry. It means they will spend time in the word and to build themselves up in their faith. And go, he said, but he said, if they were doing this thing, there is no grace, it's work. No, it's, listen, grace is defined as unmerited favor. They were not, they cannot merit it. You cannot do anything to obtain it. No. But God says, he had prepared them. And here the apostles said, you don't go anywhere, wait in Jerusalem until you be endued from with power from on high. When you read Acts chapter number 1, he said, wait in Jerusalem. In Luke 24, he said, wait to receive the promise of the Father. Now listen, they waited. Why were they waiting? They needed the Holy Spirit to anoint them. So they positioned themselves. Position yourself for grace. They positioned themselves. They spent time in prayer at the upper room waiting on God that the spirit of the Lord will come upon them. Hallelujah. Listen. Because without that, it becomes man's effort. There's no spirit in it. There's no life in it. But listen. When we begin to see God, when we be seen, begin to see what God wants us to do and we give ourselves to it, then we are ready to fulfill his assignment and grace will come. Hallelujah. Okay. So these early apostles, they positioned themselves, they prayed, and the grace of God was released upon them. And now, they were out there doing exploit. Why? Because they spent time with God. And when even they were in ministry, they said, look. And there were other services, and they said, no, 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 no. We want to spend our time. We want to give ourselves to all. Prayer and ministry. We want to give ourselves to consecrate ourselves for this assignment so that the work of God will move on. Let others do that other businesses and let's focus on our calling and assignment. Hallelujah. It's interesting. Praise the Lord. Now, let me show you something in scripture. It's very interesting. Even the Lord Jesus, the Lord Jesus himself. Hmm. Before he began ministry, he needed grace and mercy. He is full of grace, yes. But he needed the fullness of a spirit. Now, let me show you something. Matthew chapter number 4 and the verse 11. When Jesus had finished his fasting and praying, look at what had happened. Then the devil leaveth him, and behold, angel came and ministered to him. I want you to see that after the fasting, the devil or Satan came to tempt him three times. He tempted him. Jesus overcame him. And after that, the Bible is telling us what? Angel came and ministered to him. Grace given. Even Jesus needed angelic ministry before he began ministry. To, yes, he had finished the fasting and all those things. The angel came to minister to him. And so from this time, we will see the Son of Man with power manifesting the glory of God. 
Why? Because grace is released upon his life. He had received angel coming to him. And before he will also get to the cross, let's see another thing. Luke 22, 22, 43. And there appeared an angel unto him from heaven, strengthening him. Angel came from heaven. Let us take the 44. 20. And be in agony, he prayed more earnestly. And his sweat were as it were great drops of blood falling down to the ground. I want you to see before he can go to the cross. Calvary cross. He must pass through Gethsemane. An angel came and ministered to him. The minister, they came to give him assistance. Angelic ministration. So that he can enter into that state of preparation. Where his cloth of his sweat were like blood. He prayed his out earnestly. And his sweat was as it were great drops of blood falling down to the ground. And from there. From that place, he took charge and went to the cross and gave his life as a sacrifice. What am I saying? The truth is that we need grace. We need grace to be able to accomplish our assignment. And even Jesus received it before he got to the cross, before he began ministry. Angel came and ministered to him. And I want you to see that. Very, very important. Now, we need to position ourselves that when this grace will come over us, we will be able to accomplish all that have called us to do. Now, let me show you something in scripture. There's something I call closet ministry. Closet ministry. Let's get to my two chapter number six. My two chapter six. My two chapter six. Mm. Grace for your assignment. Mind to six, five and six. And when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are. For they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the street, that they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto thee, have their reward. But when thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet, that's what I call closet ministry. Enter into thy closet. And when thou hast shut the door, thy door, pray to thy father which is in secret. And thy father who sees in secret shall reward thee openly. Now, we know that Jesus Christ was a man of prayer. The disciples saw him going to pray. There were times he would be alone all night praying. Early in the morning, Mark chapter 1 and verse 35. Mark 1, 35. Mark 1, 35. Jesus. And in the morning, rising up a great while before day, he went out and departed into a solitary place and there prayed. You see, he prayed alone. He was there alone, even though he had the disciples. Before he selected the 12, he went into prayer. Luke chapter 6 and verse number 12. All night prayer. He was there praying. Why? Position yourself for God's grace. And it came to pass in those days that he went out into the mountain to pray. And continue all night in prayer to God. Why? But the verse 13 will tell you. Then he selected and when it was day, he called unto his, two, his disciples, and of them he chose twelve, whom also he named apostles. Now, the truth is this. Jesus, in his clo closet ministry, will not tell us the detail of his relationship with God and how he got the asset. All we knew is that he went to pray, like this one we just quoted. In Mark 1, 35. Early in the morning, he went to pray. That's it. But when he went in to the, meet the father, 
they discuss the business of a day and what needs to be done. The people he's going to encounter, he knew it, but he positioned himself. He prepared himself. He had an encounter with the Father. He knew all those in his closet ministry. Why we call it closet? Say, enter into your closet and lock it. It means that I think the Holy Spirit Himself will guide you into God. They are not meant for public consumption. Hallelujah. Yes, he went to prayer. The Holy Spirit will guide him. And so when we we talk about getting into your closet and praying, we are talking about getting into God and allowing the Holy Spirit. So in your separation, you now begin to give yourself to the Lord. And you spend much time with him in your closet, in your prayer, where God will begin to reveal things to come. And the next day's event, there are things that may be ahead of you, you may not know. But how do we do it? What did Jesus promise? He said he would not leave us here alone. But when the Holy Spirit comes, he will guide us into all truths. He will lead us. He will guide us. He will help us. He will teach us. All these things will be done by the Holy Spirit. How? When I sit at my office and do my own thing, then the Holy Ghost comes in. No. It means there must be a private time you have with him. And as you spend time with him in prayer and in fasting, as you prepare yourself, now you are getting ready for God's next assignment for your life. Because the Holy Spirit knows. And he knows what he wants you to do. Jesus prepared himself. And he was ready to be used by God. When he was in this natural body, even though he was God, listen, he said, look, I, will, I do nothing without consulting my father. John chapter 5 and verse 19. You see, so the truth is this. We have come this into God's grace and mercy. We have been saved. But we need to know and understand the concept and the principles of God. We need to understand that God wants us to do Many things for him. But listen, we cannot do it alone. There is a place where the Holy Spirit will come and minister to us so that we can minister in public. Listen, someone said, when you, can, when you bow down before God, you can stand before men. May you learn how to bow and prostrate yourself before him so that you can stand before men. Like Elijah said, my Lord, before God, before whom I stand. Listen, when you prostrate yourself before God, you can stand before men. Why? The Holy Spirit in your closet will guide you. He will teach you. He will lead you. He will reveal things to you. He will instruct you in the things to come. So when you look to your assignment, how can you get help and assistance? Go in there and meet with him. Go in there and wait on him. Go in there and spend time in prayer. Spend time. Listen, spending time in prayer is not wasting time. It's only getting fellowshipping with him. And he will now begin to show you what to do, what not to do. He will begin to give you grace and mercy and favor and things to come. He will cause man to accept you. He will cause people to to give to your ministry and give assistance to you. How? The Holy Spirit will do all these things because why? You spend time with him behind the scenes. Hallelujah. Actually, let's take this scripture. Uh, Let's get to uh, Romans, Romans chapter number 8, verse 26. Romans 8, 26. It talks about the Holy Spirit. 26, 27. Huh? Likewise, the Spirit also help of our infirmity. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit is a maker of intercession for us with groaning which cannot be uttered. Aha. Uh-huh. And he that searches the scars knoweth what is the mind of a spirit. Because he make up intercession for the sin according to the will of God. Now listen. The truth is that when we get into the corridors of God, it is the Holy Spirit grant us utterance we will pray by the unction of a spirit 
May God, the Holy Spirit, lead you in your prayer. Listen, we cannot give you formulas as how to be in there and do all that God wants you to do. No, there's no formula. Nobody is, we normally write four keys to prayer. Yes, but then listen, what are the keys? And we let them, we leave the scriptures and then we try to explain according to our own knowledge. But the truth is this, it is the Holy Spirit who will guide us, who will lead us, who will give an utterance in the presence of the Lord. When we enter into that closet ministry, those things which are not meant for public, but meant for us in our preparation, that we may come out for, to minister to the world. This is it. You need to understand that when you take this closet ministry serial, there will be manifestations in public. There will, but you need the Holy Spirit to guide you in your spirit, in your relationship in there. He said, we don't even know how to pray as we ought to, but he will give you with groanings. Mm, it's more of a spiritual thing. So we are giving our spirit, we speak in tongues, yeah. But listen, when we're talking about it's higher than speaking in tongues, it's getting into God and ministry and, and the Holy Spirit taking you in there and laying hands on things to come, showing you what to do and what not to do. May God help you and may he bring understanding. I'm praying that God will bring you clarity as you watch and listen to this message over and over again. May you receive illumination. May your heart be enlightened with the things of God. May God bring you to the place where your fellowship with him grow, grow deeper and deeper. Where you begin to lay her, you begin to prepare and position yourself in the place where you can receive grace for your assignment. Why? Because it is said, not by might, not by power, but by my spirit. It is a spirit that worketh in us, both to will and to do of a good pleasure. We need to have to fellowship with him in there, behind the scene, and come out and do what we are called to do. You will fulfill your assignment because you understand the ways of the law. You become like Moses, who knew the ways of the law. Israel saw his work, but Moses knew the ways of the law. May God help you that you be that brother who separate himself and consecrate himself in the closet ministry. And may God bring you to that height that thou may receive from him the thing prepared for your life and your assignment will be easier. It will not be by your effort. It will be God, God's mercy and grace coming over you. May there be a mercy and grace released over your life. May the grace of God be released over your life that you will never be the same. Hear me, brother, you can do it. Because it's not by your mind, but by his spirit. Because you understand these things. May God teach you the ways of the Lord. May he guide you in there. Hallelujah. I want to pray with you. Take that scripture. I said, Psalm number 103 and then verse 7. Yes, just take it. Moses knew the ways of the Lord. Israel saw the works. The, the, those who knew the ways of the Lord keep themselves in the closet relation. Shall we pray? Mahati Mosia Kaba. Father, let there be release. Oh God, even as we make a declaration of the truth and the things revealed to us, I pray for illumination and understanding. I pray grace and mercy and the spirit of the Lord to arise over your children and those who we are called and selected for this assignment, may they receive grace from thee. Even now they learn the ways of the law and learn to stay in the closet and build up themselves in their most holy faith, doing exploit. May they come out with power and in glory in the name of the Lord. And let the name of Jesus Christ be glorified. May they be witnesses everywhere they go. And let the name of the Lord be praised. We honor you, Lord. We give you thanks and we give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Want to give your life to Jesus? Let me pray with you. Pray this prayer with me. Dear Jesus, I come to you just as I am. Forgive me my sins. Come into my heart. Be my Lord and my Savior. Thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you, brother. Amen. Thank you and God bless you. Praise God. 
Hallelujah. For having time with the general overseer, you can follow Reverend Russell Kobana on social media for prayers and counseling. Please call plus 233 244 Thank you and God bless you.